so many women tell me like, if I could just hit hundred thousand dollars a year, it will facilitate this massive amount of change for me. And you know, that change looks different for everybody, but it's always the thing that women say, when I have that, that will be life changing. So we change your life in a year. This is the Building a Lifestyle Business Podcast, where we inspire solopreneurs like you to win back your life by teaching you how to build businesses that maximize your freedom, flexibility, and income, all without trading time for money. Here's your host, Nick Murphy. Hey there, my friend, and welcome to the Building a Lifestyle Business Podcast. I appreciate you hanging out with me. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name's Nick. I'm your host. If we haven't met yet, that must mean that you are new here. And if you are, I want you to know how thankful I am that you have found the show. My goal, as always, is to spend the next 35 or 40 minutes pulling out stories and lessons from other successful entrepreneurs that have achieved kind of what I think you're here looking for, which is how do I build a business that gives me back my freedom? How can I win back my life and live a, live a life on my terms that doesn't sacrifice my livelihood, that allows me to spend my time, my energy, and really have true freedom to, to spend my time with who I want, how I want, uh, while not having to be poor and broke or feeling like I'm not contributing in order to do that. That's what the show is all about. And I hope that you, uh, at the end of the episode here, have no choice but to press subscribe so that you can come back next week and never miss an episode. Today's guest is Allison Hardy. And in our conversation, Allison and I discussed how she went from food stamps to six figures in just two years, how she helps mompreneurs build six-figure businesses, and she shares her best advice for any new or aspiring lifestyle business owner looking to reach their goals. Allison has an incredible success story, and I'm not going to make you wait any longer to listen to it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Allison Hardy. My guest today is Allison Hardy. Allison helps mompreneurs create six-figure businesses on their terms through a hearty dose of automation, strategic email funnels to sell their products or services, and leveraging authentic media through Facebook groups to become the go-to expert in their niche. Allison's the creator of the Six Figure Mompreneur Podcast. Love that name. A Huffington Post contributor and has been featured in YFS Magazine, was also named one of Washington, D.C.'s most influential professionals under 40 by Washington Life Magazine. She's also a wife to Tier and mom to five-year-old Camden and one-year-old Nora. Allison, thanks for being here. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I am excited. I'm, I'm pumped up. Like we were just talking about, this is my third podcast I'm taping today, so I'm, I'm in the zone. We're just going to keep rolling with it. So I'm really, really excited to have you here. Mompreneur, let's just talk about that name because it's, it's brilliant. It's funny. It's either loved or hated in the industry. I've discovered my approach to a mompreneurness is you have a family, you like them a lot, you want to spend more time with them. And so you start this business and it's kind of worked around your role as a mom or as a parent first. And your business kind of fits into that role that you have. I love the term. If you haven't trademarked it, you absolutely should because I, I love it. I guess some people might might not apparently, but I think it's brilliant. Very, it's very catchy. You hear mompreneur and, and you think of you. It's great. Yeah. I think a lot of women kind of resent it. But I think that's a whole nother underlying issue going on right there. But I love it. I embrace it. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to go. We're not going to go there. I think it's awesome. Thank you. So let's get into to kind of the gist of the conversation here. And obviously we'll talk about how mompreneur came to be, your podcast, your business, kind of what gave you all that experience. But what did you set out to do, I guess, as, as we all do in college and we have our eye on this quote unquote career? Walk us through kind of the, the early years of your professional life, what you were doing, what you thought you'd get out of it, just anything that was might have been missing along that path. From the moment I can remember, I always wanted to be an artist. I always, always, always have loved to paint and it's truly a passion of mine and still is. So when I went to, you know, I got into high school my parents were like, listen, we didn't go to college. We don't know anything about this world that you want and that you're doing. So like, you're going to have to figure this out on your own. Like we'll be there. We'll walk alongside you, but like, you're going to be the first person in our family to graduate from college. So like, you're going to need to kind of lead us on this. So I really kind of dug deep and I was like, all right, what do I want to do? And what I really loved about art was teaching. And that was kind of like my role in my family was I was the one who loved school. I'm a huge nerd and I love to learn. And so I was like, okay, I want to go to college and I want to learn how to teach at the college level because I want to be that like mentor for someone like me, like who's never done this before, who's like stepping out of the box of what they, you know, know or have been taught growing up. So I went to school for seven years. I got a terminal degree in freaking painting and printmaking and that's what I went on to do. At the age of 21, I had the tenure track job. I was 
like the youngest in my department by like 20 years, like <laughs> really, really <laughs> super ambitious. And you know, that's what I was going to do until the age of 65. That was it. Like I was determined this was it for me. And, you know, I did all the right things. I, I did the committee work. I did the volunteer work. I worked like 60 to 70 hour weeks. I was teaching six classes with at least 40 students in each class. I was grading at all hours of the day and night. And it was a lot. And when my husband and I got married, we were like, you know what? Like, he, and he's a pastor. He's a pastor. So teaching, being a college professor and being a pastor, let's be honest, like the cash flow isn't anything amazing. It was really, really tight. No Maseratis in the driveway. <laughs> None of that. And, you know, we were like, okay, we're going to have to wait to have a family. We were 25 when we got married. So we we're like, we have plenty of time. Like, let's just like take our time, no rush. And huh, three years in, we got pregnant and it was not expected. It was kind of like a big, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then at six months pregnant, uh, we had another, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Because I got laid off from my dream job. It was terrifying. It was so scary because like we needed my income. Like it was not something that we couldn't have. Um, and so that's when I started my business and I replaced my nine to five income in the three months before Camden, my son was born. And so that's kind of like my, my thrust being thrusted into entrepreneurship. All right, let's go there. You just, you broke down a 90 day window from layoff to giving birth where you replaced your income. Granted, you were, you were an instructor, you weren't making a fortune, but that's still one heck of an accomplishment. What did you do? Did you know what you were going to do? Like, let's get into that. What, how'd you do it? So the way I played for college was I ran track. So I had a pole vaulting scholarship, strangely enough. Yes. <laughs> and that's how I paid for college. So while I was in college, I got a personal training certification and it was something I did just kind of on the side for like a little extra money every month. Like I would train my friends in my backyard every Saturday morning and I ran like some in-person boot camps and just like piddly little stuff. So I had that going on in the background. So that was what I did when I got laid off is I took that personal training business from part-time to full-time or like hobby status to full-time. Um, in those three months. And I also partnered with a network marketing company that allowed me to offer like products alongside of my in-person, my in-person services. And because I had a lot of connections, I was able to approach a lot of my friends and be like, Hey, I'm doing this thing. I think you should do it with me because this is what we can do together. And so I was able to really rank advance pretty quickly in that network marketing company because of what I already had established. And it kind of just really complemented my, my services really well. So how long did you do that? That business probably lasted too long. Uh, probably two and a half years. <laughs> yeah, two and a half years. So let's walk through the transition. You did that for two and a half years. You know, you're a new mom. You're making a little bit of money. You probably still haven't solved some of the financial problems or, or not problems, but you're not living high on the hog. Let's just put it that way, right? So how did you walk us through that transition from that point to kind of the business that you're in now, you know, the early years? How did you decide upon it? What happened? Just go through that story. Business was good for a while. It was okay. It paid the bills. Like that we didn't have a lot of extra cash, but like we could pay the bills. And that's really all I wanted. And there was this kind of shift in my network marketing company when they stopped offering, like they changed the business model. And what I had established didn't work with that change. And so my income month after month started to drastically drop. Like we're talking making around, I think, $5,000 a month through that partnership. And within five months, I was making like $500 a month. And it was a bit, you know, I, I, like nothing that I did, I felt like, you know, I'm sure looking back on it now, there's some things I would change, but like, I just felt like I was always just like fighting the the partnership because of these changes, because I like the market was getting really saturated. So month after month after month, my income started to drop. And finally, it just like, plummeted. And there were like, I felt like there was nothing I could do. And it kind of all came to a head December, 2015. It was the beginning of the month. I logged into the bank account with $15. Like we still had to buy groceries. I still had to buy some Christmas presents. And like, that was it for the month. And I was like, okay, this, this doesn't work anymore. And it hadn't really been working for a while, but it was kind of like the writing was on the wall. And so on that day, we applied for food stamps and we were accepted, which totally sucked. 
I couldn't pay my son's tuition bill for preschool. And he went to the preschool that my husband, who the, the church my husband worked for, they ran the preschool. So, you know, the pastor's wife goes into the preschool and says, hey, I need to take my son out because we can't pay for it. So like big humility moment. It was terrible. And it was kind of like the, all right, Allison, here's another, another like similar to getting laid off. Like what the heck are you going to do? And I realized that as much as I love fitness, I love it. It's great. It's still something I do every single day. The thing that I really loved about that business was mentoring my team on my, my network marketing team. Like I loved helping those women build their businesses. I loved helping them make the extra 500 to 5,000 to $10,000 they wanted every month to help them achieve their goals. That was the thing that really lit me up. It was just fitness was like the catalyst or the, the facilitator, I guess, for those relationships. So I was like, okay. I think this is what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to shut everything down and I'm going to become a business coach. <laughs> you know, my <laughs> husband's like, sure. All right. <laughs> He's like, you're losing your mind over here. But it really like that partnership and that business, I honestly feel like I had to have done that to be like where I am now. So that's how I started doing what I am now. And it's, that's, that's, that's how it's been so, since then. So let's get into that a little bit. You do the network marketing thing. You realize you have a, an affinity and a, a passion around mentorship, around helping people achieve their goals. Uh, you're an athlete and you have been your whole life, I assume, and, and still really are. So you've got that kind of competitive drive and like teamwork and coaching and all those things that those of us athletes kind of have and bring to the table. How did you fill in the skills gap, I guess, between art and now you've got this network marketing thing where today you're using, it's, it sounds like email automation, email marketing and sales funnel kind of mastery to help people build How'd you, how'd you acquire those skills? Was it trial and error doing it yourself? Kind of where did you go to learn that? And, and just walk us through that journey. So on that day that I applied for the food stamps and uh, took my son out of preschool, I actually invested also in business coach, which makes no sense on paper. And I charged the entire thing on a credit card. I don't actually know how I actually got accepted by, with that credit card. But that that's what taught me a lot of what I know now. It was really like a boot camp for like, okay, you have a business idea. Let's like make this thing, make you some money in 90 days. And so that was like my time frame. I gave myself, I said that in the next 90 days, if I can't like resurrect my business, if I can't figure out a way to make money, I'm going to start applying for, for nine to fives again. I'm just, it's just how it's going to be. I'm going to apply for multiple nine to fives. I'm going to go to a gym and I'll work there. I'll start applying for teaching jobs again. I'll figure something out. But that coaching, if I would not have had it, I would not be sitting here talking to you today. It really taught me like the basics and it told me, it just showed me how to make some freaking money, quite honestly. And then from there, I was able to get enough breathing room to start investing in some other things. And then when Nora, my one-year-old, my now one-year-old was born, it became really clear to me that I needed to invest in automation and learn automation. So that's really where whole email systems, Facebook group systems, all of that kind of came into play because I now had two kids and I had to like actually live my life. I couldn't, I couldn't be a workaholic anymore. So she gave me that gift, which is super cool. Let's talk about that moment because I think, you know, obviously I, I sell some components of coaching courses, things like that. I feel like I personally, I think the word coach has just become so darn commoditized. I don't even like, like mentioning it in terms of like, what do you do? Like, Oh, you're a coach. Like, well, sort of, but I don't like calling myself that. Regardless, you just alluded to something that's really, really important. And in a moment where you had no money, where on paper, that was not a quote unquote smart decision, although I would argue it was the best thing you could have done. Walk us through that psychology. What was it that, was it faith? Was it just, I have nothing else to turn to, so let's hope this is the thing? What did you, what was going on in your head and in your heart? And then when you're in that place, obviously you're super open to what that coach is going to tell you because you have to learn it now. Just walk through that psychology and that process and just be as, as specific as you can in terms of what you remember for people that might be in that situation or be considering making that type of investment. First, I had been following that specific coach for hmm, about six months. I attended like all of her free stuff. You know, I did it free challenges, free webinars, all of that. So I knew that she was the coach for me. What she had accomplished in a very short amount of time was what I wanted to accomplish in a very short amount of time. So I knew she was right for me in that. I knew I needed something because with network marketing and what I was doing, it was a lot of 
trading dollars for hours. And in network marketing, you're taught a lot of active stuff, a lot of active reach out, a lot of active like challenge groups and lots and lots of value. And then you like cross your fingers and your eyes and your toes and you hope that they actually book with you and they end up working with you. And like, it's a lot of active work. And I, I actually believe that's a huge flaw in the industry. I think the industry is great, but I think it's a huge flaw in the industry. But she like preached this whole different story. She was like very unapologetic about how that doesn't work. She was very clear as to what needed to actually happen in your business. And it was super refreshing. So I knew she was the coach for me because I believed in what she was saying. Now the buying part was hard. It was really hard. We were trying to figure my husband and I were like trying to like piecemeal everything together. We were trying to like just see what we could do. And finally it was just like, you know what? We like, we can't figure it out. We can't figure it out. So I was like, we need to find some other alternatives. I was like, maybe we just need to find a credit card. Like we just need to like interest free six months and let's just make it happen. Like that's my thing. Like I have six months to pay off this investment. And if I don't, it's a huge, like you're not meant to do this. And if you do, maybe you've got something going on here. And I kind of really felt like I had no other choice. I had gotten us so deep that I needed to dig us out. And I knew going back to a nine to five wouldn't really dig us out. It would put a bandaid on it because we would have to put my son in full-time daycare and we would have to do a lot of different things. And so like the cost versus the expenses wouldn't really make, it would make a difference, you know, consistent money, but it wouldn't make a huge difference. And so it was a super scary, you know, investment. I had a total panic attack right after I bought. And like, I laid in my bed and like in the fetal position was like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Like, was this smart? Was this stupid? Oh my gosh. But like, I had to make something happen. I had to do something different. I love that. And let's just segue into, obviously it did work. You learned what you needed to learn. You took that step forward. And today you have a successful business that looks like you're growing about 400% year over year. Just take the floor here for a second and let's talk about specifically what you do, who it's for, and and kind of make your pitch, if you will, to the listener out there who might want to work with you one day. Yeah. So I help women create six-figure businesses. And we do that in a variety of ways. First off, we make sure that your business model is actually sustainable and scalable because a lot of women get into these business models where they can't grow it unless you want to work more hours. And most women who have kids at home, when they're wrangling them and building a business, like cannot work more hours. So we talk a lot about automation. We talk a lot about passive income or reoccurring income or business models that, you know, maybe for a year, you know exactly how much money is going to be coming in. And then when you relaunch, you know exactly how much money is going to be coming in the next year. So we, we've set your business up for longevity and for dependability. And so we always look at email funnels. We always look at list building activities. We always look into Facebook groups or Facebook pages or the social, you know, Instagram, whatever social media outlet you love. We take what you're doing and we figure out what's working. We look at the numbers. We see where you're spending your time, how you're spending your time, what's working, what's not working. And we take those numbers and those results and then we scale them in that way. Um, so I love Facebook groups. I, I think Facebook groups are an amazing way to build the know, like, and trust factor. And most of my clients feel that way too. So they also have really hearty, amazing, heart-centered Facebook groups. But, you know, I think it's a matter also of like, seeing what you like, seeing what you like, specifically want and how you want to achieve it, and then figuring out a model and a strategy that actually works for you. So I have um, a like, it's called the Legacy Mastermind, which is my year-long high-touch program that launches every December. We work together for an entire year and the whole entire goal of that mastermind is to create a six-figure business for you. Because that's the number that so many women tell me, like, if I could just hit $100,000 a year, it will facilitate this massive amount of change for me. And you know that change looks different for everybody. But it's always the thing that women say, when I have that, that will be life-changing. So we change your life in a year. 100%. 100%. So when you got into this, a lot of people who are starting businesses or, or who don't start businesses do so, or they wait, or they kind of stagnate, or they, they dabble, but they don't really go all in. And you know the term is imposter syndrome. You just don't feel like you're worthy. You're like, who am I to be teaching or charging or, or coaching? Did you have any of that coming in, kind of where you came in, what was going on in your personal life? And if you did, how did you overcome it? And if you didn't, how'd you avoid it? I did it first, but quite honestly, it was pretty short lived simply because I was so in the weeds. Like I had to make it work. So even if I was feeling those feelings, I had to push them aside. I had to like figure out a way to get rid of them. 
because I knew that wasn't serving my family or myself or my clients really. Cause if I was to serve, it's reciprocating, right? So like, if you need to make some cash, if you are strapped for cash, if you're kind of in this do or die moment, like I was, you need to serve in a big, big way and make an impact in people's lives in a big, big way so that they can return that favor and pay you some money, right? It's an exchange of energy. I honestly didn't have time for it. And sounds crazy saying it, but it's true. That was three years ago, which is crazy. But now, you know, I'll have those feelings crop up and I'll go back to what do you know? What's actually the truth? Is this feeling serving you? Probably not, right? And does it even matter? Like, do these feelings matter? And if they don't matter, then like, there's no point in worrying about them. So you got to figure out a way to push them aside and be like, nope, not true. Moving on. I absolutely love that. You obviously are very purposeful and, and specific in your brand about who you serve, you know, women in six figure businesses. Did you land on that strategically? Was that just because that's who you were and who you were familiar with? How did you kind of niche down into that segment? And I guess the other question is if, if there's a guy listener out there who loves what you're talking about and wants to work with you, do, do you work with men also? You know, I would not be opposed to working with men, but I've never had a guy approach me once. And it's so funny because I actually interact with yeah, I'm actually in like coaching programs with men, but I've never once had a single guy approach me. I think it's just because it's so like mom, my brand is so mom centered. Yeah. Do you see how clear that brand is? It's awesome. It attracts the ones and repels the ones that, that you don't think are a good fit or or that just self-identify is not a good fit, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I've always started, worked with moms because that was kind of like my entry into entrepreneurship. I've never known entrepreneurship outside of being a mom and an entrepreneur. So... I landed on the six figure thing actually like within the past, I guess, six months because I kept hearing my audience say over and over and over again, I want a six figure business. Allison, I want what you have. And as great as six figures is, like, it's awesome. I'm super proud that I have a six figure business. But like when you're in it, you know, it's not like this magical thing. And so I try to be really clear to my audience that, yeah, you may want a six figure business. That's awesome. And like, we can make that happen for you. It's totally possible for everyone. But like, just know when you hit six figures, it's not like the skies are going to open up and angels are going to sing. Like it's, that's not how it happens. (laughs) You still have the same kind of stuff you're dealing with. It's just in a different, kind of a different way of dealing with it. You know, once you have a six figure business. For your audience, particularly with moms, a lot of the women that I've worked with over the years, it, it, there's something about their identity being wrapped up in the family and wanting something more and wanting to feel like they're contributing. Whether that's real or imagined, the idea of financial contribution seems to mean a lot to the women I've worked with. Do you feel like that's part of why six figures is a number or is it is it something more tangible around what that would do for their family financial situation? I think it's a little of both. That's such a good question. Um, I think for a lot of women who... You know, they think they're going to get married. They're going to have the white pick offense, the 2.5 kids and the lab. Husband's going to work the nine to five jive, come home every night. You're going to have dinner on the table. You know, the perfect like family dynamic, what everyone views is perfect. And then they get in it and they're like, holy crap, I hate this. <laughs> this is like, who am I? What has happened to me? This is terrible. Maybe not terrible, but I don't feel fulfilled. You know, I hear a lot of women say, I thought when I had kids and, you know, we figured out how to stay home with them, it's not me, you know, and that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is the career, the career women. So they're in a career that they went to college for. This is what they're going to do. They're the high powered lawyer or the, in my case, the college professor or the, you know, whatever, like this huge job, this big job that you've worked your entire life for. And then you have kids and you're like, oh my gosh. I love my kids more than my job. Like what is going on? I don't want to do my job anymore. And it's kind of both of them, the stay at home mom and the work mom, they have these like identity crises and they realize I want something more. I want something else. Like what else does this look like? So contributing financially to their family means something to them. They don't realize it once they either don't have it or they're, they are doing it that like they still want to do something. They still want to make some money. They still want to help to pay the bills or they want to help to like go on vacation and not worry about the money or they want to help to pay off their student loans or, you know, whatever it is. I think a lot of women get really like wrapped up in what they think is going to happen. And then when they're in it, they're like, oh my gosh, no, this doesn't work for me. That makes total sense. In my book on box, we talk a lot about that too, just in terms of the season of your career. And it's certainly true for women 
because they're the ones that have the children. But it's true for all of us. If there's something that changes fundamentally in our personal life, it's totally natural and to be expected that your career interests, what you're willing to do, you know, the things that might have lit you up when you were 26, you know, spending all this time working and climbing the ladder suddenly don't seem that appealing when you're, you're 32 and you have kids. So just for you listeners out there that, that aren't thinking about that, if there's something personal in your life that's, that's coming down the, the path at you or something that you want to do, just be prepared and expect to have your priorities shift and just be self-aware enough to understand what that means. You're not wrong. It's not crazy. The whole sunk cost fallacy of I, I have to do what I've always done because I've invested in it isn't, isn't true. I'm assuming you would agree with that. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes, for sure. All right. So you built this great business. It, talk about a moment. What's that highest high? Is there a moment in time or, or just a general feeling when you kind of sit back and go, man, like this is, this is what it's all about. I cannot believe I'm lucky enough to get to do this every day. Yeah. I would say my first bigger launch. So at the time it was a huge launch for me. I had a launch for a group program and I just attracted these amazing women into it. They were like total go-getters. They all paid me in full right off the bat, which is amazing. Usually doesn't happen. And they were just so like lit up to get to work. Those women made serious, serious changes. And it was a four month program. Like in four months, they like, one of them retired her husband. Like one of them made like an extra like 10K than what she had normally been making that month. And it was just like this really, amazing program that got amazing results, but also connected me with like these really cool women. And every single time we would get off a call, we did like group coaching calls. Every single time we get off a call, I was always like, dang, that was amazing. Right. And it was just like this really cool, total in alignment program that produced some big results. And ever since that, that launch, I've had the confidence that yes, like we can make this happen together. Like I truly believe that when women come together, they are strong and they can do some big things. And that program like totally validated that for me. I love that. That is awesome. We play a little game here called Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire is brought to you by Podigy. If you listen at all, you know I can't stand doing my own audio editing. I don't even really like to write my own show notes. I outsource all that to the guys at Podigy. They make sure me and my guests sound great so that I have time to focus on my business and find great guests like Allison. So Allison, are you ready to play Rapid Fire? Yes. All right, here we go. What do you think about when you're alone in your car? Oh my gosh, I'm alone so 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 not frequently. I think about probably what I'm going to drink when I get home. What's your advice for your previous boss? <laughs> oh my gosh, my advice to my previous boss is stop micromanaging me. What do you want to be when you grow up? A superhero. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what inspires you? My kids. What is your biggest fear? My big, this is ridiculous. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, girlfriend's crazy. My biggest fear, we used to live at the beach. Um, so it was very coastal. So there were lots and lots and lots and lots of bridges. And I'm not afraid of bridges, but there was this one bridge that was really low to the water and it was really, really long. So it was my biggest fear that I was going to be driving with my kids one day and something was going to happen and I was going to go over the edge of the bridge, go through, you know, the like 10 guardrails up there, land in the water. And I was going to have to get my kids out of the sinking car in the water. That's vivid. That's vivid. Yeah, it's totally vivid. Yes. Who do you admire the most? My mom. Which celebrity annoys you the most? I think that Johnny Depp annoys me the most, but I'm also super infatuated by him. How do you define success? I define success by being able to turn it off at the end of the day and enjoy my time with my family. All right, last one. You get to share a drink or a meal with anyone in history, dead or alive. Who is it and why? Kurt Cobain, because I actually think he was super smart, just hopped up on lots of drugs, which is unfortunate. Nirvana reference. You don't always get that. You survived rapid fire. Congratulations, <laughs> Allison. Thank you. Before I let you go, I've got to ask you this question. Knowing what you know today about your business, if you were going back and starting over tomorrow, is there anything you would do differently? And if so, what would that be? Uh, I would invest in coaching earlier. I love that. Before I let you go, where can our listeners go to connect with you more closely online? If there's a mompreneur out there or, or a aspiring wannabe mompreneur, where can we find you and where should we go? Oh yeah. So I have a podcast called The Six Figure Mompreneur Podcast. So I'd love for you to listen there. Or you can also join my Facebook group called the Six Figure Mompreneur Community. 
I love that. Please go trademark that name. It is brilliant. Uh, I appreciate you spending all this time with us. Fascinating story. If you guys are out there and you're wondering, you know, can I do this? Think about Allison's story. It hasn't been that long since the the food stamps and pulling her son out of kindergarten. And look, not just what she's achieved for herself and her family, but all the people that she's helping and serving along the way. Uh, super inspirational stuff. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Nick. And there you have it. I hope you enjoy that conversation with Allison Hardy. Pretty inspiring stuff. I mean, if you can go from food stamps to six figures in just a couple of years, what's possible for you? What's possible if you chase this dream of yours? What is it? What is going to happen if you can actually get out there and start down the path and, and start to create the lifestyle business that you know you want and that, frankly, you deserve? Even if you don't believe that yet, I'm here to tell you that you do deserve it. I believe it for you. And I hope that at shows like this and episodes like this, the conversation I had with Allison can inspire you to take that action. You do deserve it. You can have it all. Uh, you just got to get started. Whether you love this episode or whether you hated it, I invite you to let me know right there in the app that you use to listen to podcasts. I read each and every review. And in addition to telling me directly how this episode was, what you liked, what you didn't like, and giving me ways I can improve the show, uh, you also signal to that provider that this is a podcast that other people need to hear. Uh, so I thank you in advance for taking just a minute or two out of your time. You just got to do it once. Just subscribe, rate, and review one time. It means the world to me. It helps other people just like you find the show and uh, engage with the content to achieve their own goals. As always, I have to remind you to get in the game if you're not already. Trading time for money is no way to live. You deserve a life on your terms, and building a lifestyle business is the fastest, safest, best way to do just that. I appreciate you so much for being here. I hope you have an awesome week. I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for listening to the Building a Lifestyle Business Podcast. To access the resources mentioned in this episode, visit www.nickmurphy.io 